Welcome to RamblinWreck.com, and this is Embry Peoples, a senior? Yes, sir. That is impossible to believe, isn't it? Yeah. It goes just like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. I can remember yesterday just coming in here. <laughs> How fast does it go? Real fast. Like, imagine waking up and trying to put the covers back over here and then pulling them back. That's yeah. how fast it goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, you're one of the core guys here. Um, you're a guy coaches counting on the lead, yes, counting on to make plays. Uh, what's this season been like for you? It's been fun. It's been fun. I know we started off real strong, and then we kind of, you know, downshifted, it feel like. But we still have a chance to do something good here. Because, you know, yesterday, Coach Johnson told us a stat about, like, the number of teams that have, like, eight wins or more. And he said it was, like, ten teams that had, like, eight wins. Mm -hmm. But only three that got ten wins, and we have a chance to be one of those ten win teams with the other last three games. So that's what we're going to strive to do. Does that resonate when a stat comes out like that? I mean, it's been last since 1950. There's only three teams with mm -hmm. ten wins. Does that stat resonate to a guy who's playing, or is that more for fans or media or things like that? Or do you think about something like that? You actually think about stuff like that because we have an opportunity to, you know, what I mean, go down in the record book. So mm -hmm. as a player, you want to be in the books for something. So. That would be something good to be in the books for. You're already in the books for one thing. No two, no players in tech history have top five wins like your senior class does. And, and some of those freshmen from 09 do if they play. But you played in the Virginia Tech game of 09. You played in the Clemson game of 11. So you're part of a select group that's got wins over top five teams at home. There are not many in that category either. When you're playing, do you think of – Stuff like that, EP? Uh, kind of, sort of. When the, Maybe before the snap, you're thinking about stuff like that. But once the ball snaps in between the whistles, all you're thinking about is defeating the person across from you. So. Tell me about the last few weeks. Because you said strong start, a mm -hmm. little bit of a slip here in the last, you know, three of the last four have not gone the way you all wanted. What have you learned about this team? Because I know it was important to this team not to repeat the ills of a year ago, right? I guess. One thing we learned is that we can't take our foot off the gas. We can't get too comfortable at where, where we're at. It's always a, a constant thing. we got to prove something every week, week in and week out. we got something to prove. We can't get comfortable with Just because we went 6-0, and people are going to be like, well, Georgia Tech's a good team, so we can just go out there and you know come and play second half, but not the first half. we got to play from the start of the first quarter to the end of the fourth quarter. Are those hard lessons to learn? Kind of, sort of, because you know sometimes you take a loss for it. So, yeah, it is a hard, hard lesson to learn. Is that what happened to Virginia, you think? Yeah, pretty much. They came out, they, was, they came out and hit us in the mouth. We kind of, like, wiped it off, and it was like, well, we'll come back. And when we tried to come back, it wasn't enough, you know. So, so then does that make last Thursday night especially disappointing? Yeah, it does. It does. Because last Thursday we had a chance to, you know what I mean, to keep the, I guess, like Coach Johnson said, we kind of hold our own destiny. Mm. We kind of hit ourselves in the, in the crotch with that one. We're losing that, so <laughs> and now we got to stand back up. All right. He has used the term that the Duke game will test the character of this football team. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, and in this room we're in, character is one of those words on the wall. Mm -hmm. Does that mean something then going into this ball game Saturday? I think it means a lot because right now, like, a lot of a team feels that we don't have a chance to play in the championship, mm. but we still have games to play, and we still have, like I said, a chance to be in the record books for those 10 wins. So we have to come out against Duke and play like the team we was the first six weeks of this season to show to ourselves and our fans that we are a good team and we can be in the record books for something. You know? When you showed up here, it was almost one of the great unknowns. Here comes this guy with his offense, had been successful at Georgia Southern, had been successful at Navy, and you bought in. Mm -hmm. Tell me about buying in to an unknown because, I mean, you knew how good a coach he was and yeah. knew how good the offense could be, but really there was a lot of unknown here. Yeah, it was. People was probably talking about, oh, it's not going to work, it's not going to do this and that. You don't want to listen to that. You got you to gotta blank that out and believe that Coach Johnson has a plan. And with that plan, you can go far with it. So, you know, that's really what we did. We all brought it into the system. It was like, we got to come together as one and play for one another and play for our coach. So that's all what we pretty much did. I ran into one of his former players at Georgia Southern last summer, and they said the young guys who signed on early 
will take more pride a decade from now than they may do now. But yes, yet sir. you guys have had some success here, so I sense there's a great deal of pride in this senior class that, that may not have been there with the guys that were here when he showed up. Yeah, I think so too. We all, we all walk, walk with our chest out now, you know. When we first got here, it was kind of like, well, we don't know if it's going to work. We don't know how we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But after, probably after the first season, he kind of was like, yeah, we got something good here. So we got to just keep on working with it and keep buying in and get everybody else that comes here to buy in as well. Do you know during a game when it's going to be a big play? You can kind of feel it. Like you can kind of get in the huddle, and then once like whoever brings the play and brings the play in, everyone kind of looks at one another and was like, Let's go. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> and that's a play that usually breaks for a 10 or a 20, 30 or a touchdown. So. When you're in the orbit, I've, always, I've never asked anybody this question. When you're in the orbit, what are you thinking about? Long before the ball snapped, here you go in motion. What do you think about? Man, I hope he pitch it. Man, I hope he pitch it. Man, I hope he pitch it. Oh, he pitched it. <laughs> let's go. That's it. <laughs> it's pretty it's that simple? Uh-huh. I mean, do you think about the play? Do you think about who's doing, the, who's got the block, who's got the key? I trust them. I trust that they're gonna do their job, and I gotta do mine. So. You also take a little pride in blocking too, don't you? For a guy as fast as you are, you like to get after guys, don't you? Yeah. What streak is that? Some little competitive streak, or is that getting beat up as a kid? I mean, what's the? Nah, I mean, I guess growing up, growing up, I never really had the opportunity to block because I was always the one that was scoring when I was younger. Obviously, but, <laughs> but once I got here and you know and learned how to you know cut block and stuff like that, it became fun. Like, it got to the point where we'd be on the sideline, we'd be you know chanting at one another like, "I bet you I get more cut blocks than you." Like, nah, I, I'm gonna get the most. So that's what we go out every week is just try to get the most cut blocks, and whoever wins just get bragging rights for the week. So that's what we go out there and do. All right, so who's the best blocker among the A backs? All of them. All the A-backs on the team, Robbie yourself Guy. included, who's the best? Robbie Guy. Really? Yeah. What makes him so good? I don't know. He just, by him being so low to the ground, I guess he can just stop on the dime and shift and explode into, into the defender's leg. But when he do it, it's something to watch. Well, it's not like you're 6'2". Nah, I know. But he's 5'5", five, five maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you mean we're not telling the, the height we list is not right? Probably not. For Robbie God, huh? Uh -huh. What's that? I got probably five, six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to one more question here. And this might be the most important question you have to answer. Are you really the fastest guy on the football team? Yeah. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. Maybe. Is Sno it close? Broderick probably give me a run for my money. Broderick Snotty. Yeah. Who's, a, who's redshirting? Yeah. He'll probably give me a run for my money, but. If there were 10 races between you and Broderick, how many would he win? I'd give him probably about three. Three? Yeah. Yeah. I'd give him three. I wouldn't say he'd win three. I'd give him three. Oh, you give him three? Yeah. Okay. Just get his confidence up to beat him on the next <laughs> one. <laughs> if, if he's the second fastest, of the older guys, who's closest to you? Of the older guys, who's closest? Is there anybody in your ballpark? Let me think. Not really. That would be close. Zenon? Tony would be close. He'd be up there. I'll put him up there with us. All right. What's the fastest time Embry Peoples has ever run the 40 in? 40? When I was, I want to say I was 15, I ran a 4, 4 3, 1. Yeah? Since then, you've gotten old. Yeah. Not as fast as you were when you were 15? I think I'm faster now. Do you? Mm-hmm. I could probably go out there and cruise a 4-4, so, yeah. You could cruise a 4-4. Yeah, I did that, so, I mean, I know I could do that. <laughs> but if you really ran. If I really ran, it would be something. 4-3? Pretty amazing. Low 4-3s? Yeah, if not 4-2. Four 4-2? Two. Four two. You think before you're done here, you got a long one in you? Mm-hmm. I do. You've been close, right? I've been close. It's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I'm going to open them hands, and I'm going to ride out. Now, that's the secret we got to tell people, right? Yeah. When you're really running fast, your hands are open. Yeah, flying saucer. When, you're, when you got the clenched fist? Nothing. Not I'm running cruising, fast. I'm cruising. cruising. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doing enough to outrun everybody else. <laughs> Thanks for the time. Thank you. That's Embry Peoples. This is RamblinRack.com.